I want to talk to you about grief after narcissistic abuse. And it's something that I think it isn't talked about enough, to be honest, because I think so many of us associate grief with if someone dies close to us. But grief is a huge factor when we are healing from narcissistic abuse. And when I talk about grief, it's that loss, you know, that loss of maybe the parent child relationship you wish you could have had the loss of that childhood. Maybe it's the loss of the family life you really, really thought and hoped that you would have. So when we talk about grief, maybe insert the word loss instead, because it's something that I certainly found really, really challenging to deal with when I went through my divorce, this sense of loss that I kept feeling. Now we do talk about the grieving cycle that when you break up with somebody, when you go through a divorce, when you actually lose a loved one, you do go through this grieving cycle. So initially you go into that denial stage, then you go into that anger, feeling really angry. Certainly I went through that stage, angry at the other person and then anger at yourself. How could I be so stupid? How could I do all of that? Then you go into that negotiation stage. Could I have done this? What if I had have done that? Would the result have been any different? Then the depression stage. Now, When when I talk about depression and feeling depressed, it is a normal part of our grieving process to feel sad, to feel depressed, but it doesn't necessarily mean we have depression. It is a normal um, cycle of that. And then probably the hardest bit to go into in the grieving cycle is acceptance. Because how do we accept the loss of a childhood? How do we actually accept then that, you know, my children are in a broken home. Don't you just hate those words that society uses when you um, divorce somebody, a broken home, single parent, almost like we are castigating a whole society that, you know, their kids are going to live this second class life now because the parents have broken up. And I certainly find that really distasteful, actually, and something that really I feel should be changed because you know what a child needs? Love, security, and happy parents. And that might mean just one happy parent. And I can certainly talk from experience there. You know, healing myself was the biggest gift that I could give to my children. Because when I healed myself, then that meant I could be the very best parent, not parents, parent I could possibly be. Because for those of you who are a parent listening to this right now, let me ask you this. When you thought about having a child, what was it you thought about how you would be as a parent to that child and I know certainly for me it was like I wanted to be the best mum I possibly could I wanted to show them love and give them confidence and lots of lots of self-worth and self-esteem so they could grow up and be independent confident young adults and that has never changed it's never wavered from that just because I'm not with their father anymore doesn't mean that that has wavered but I think sometimes from a societal perspective because of the wording that is used broken home then we we often feel like, oh, my kids are going to have this lesser life now because of that. And that really, really isn't the case. So that sense of loss that we feel, it can be really, really challenging. And, and I always remember feeling like I could feel it in my bones almost, this sense of loss, you know, and I see this a lot with my clients and I see it a lot in my community, that if it's a narcissistic parent, it's that sense of how do I accept that sense of loss of the childhood that I can never get back. You know, my childhood was my childhood. I'm an adult now. There's no going back. How do I find a sense of peace with that? Or maybe it's a partner. Maybe you got married. Maybe you were in a relationship. Maybe you went on and had children and thought that you were going to have this wonderful life together. And then all of a sudden it's gone. I know when, when my, um, absolute came through for my divorce I remember I went down to the courthouse my local courthouse in Northampton and I went in and I got my absolute and I I literally remember it like it was yesterday I remember walking out and sitting on a bench literally a bench outside the courthouse and I remember just crying and I'm sure I looked the most strange person coming out of the courthouse just this woman sat on this bench on her own with tears streaming down my face and, and it wasn't that I wanted to be back married with my ex. It absolutely wasn't that. 
but it was this sense of loss, this grief that I had, literally to the court in my bones, that it was this loss of the life and the hope that I really entered into my marriage with all of that and it was gone. It had been dashed. And it was that sense of realization that this is it and there's no going back and I can't change it. And I think that's one of the hardest things that I certainly found coping with was that I can't change the past. So how do I find a place in the present to find a sense of acceptance and peace? Now, when we talk about trauma, and you know, I talk a lot about narcissistic trauma, um, you know, abuse is what happens to us, never because of us, it happens to us. And that trauma that we hold on to because of that experience with a narcissist, it's about what we're telling ourselves on a really deep level. I'm not lovable. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. You know, that's what's causing us to feel that dysregulation and activation in our bodies. It's not the narcissist. Nobody can make us feel anything if there's not a wound that the other person, i.e. the narcissist, is actually aggravating. We wouldn't be activated. That moment when we feel that dysregulation in our body, we're not in the present moment. We've gone back to being reminded of something from our past. And that's why we're reacting in the present because our nervous system and our brain and particularly our amygdala and hippocampus, which are in our limbic system, our emotional part of the brain, are almost like this siren going off, going danger, danger, danger. And that's why we feel that activation and dysregulation in the present because our memories haven't been time stamped into the past. Our brain and body doesn't recognize we are safe in the present now, but it's still activating because things from our past haven't been time stamped into the past. It's like we are reliving things in the present moment and feeling the activation as opposed to remembering them. And I think one of the things that I work really hard with in with my clients and also in my narcissistic trauma recovery program is about helping you recognize and integrate, keyword here, integration. This isn't about forgetting what has happened to you. Because let's face it, you're never going to forget, right? Whether that be you had narcissistic parents and you could have had this horrific childhood, because believe me, a lot of my clients and a lot of those in my program have had the worst childhood, literally. What about if you've had that marriage, that abusive marriage? You know, how do you find a sense in that moment of integration, knowing these things have happened to you so that you can go on and live your best life? How do you do that? How do you look back at your life and think that actually happened to you and not feel in some way activation? And this is where I think many of us really need to recognize this isn't about erasing things that have happened to you. What it is, is about recognizing in the present that you are safe now. And this is when we do a lot of nervous system work because our nervous system is what goes into the fight, flight and freeze to protect us in the present from our perception of danger. But very often, and many of you listening and watching right now will be thinking, well, Cameron, I am safe now. That does not mean you don't have a ton of challenges because the narcissist is challenging, right? (laughs) Let's make no mistake about that. That is not what I'm saying. You know, that it's what I'm saying is the narcissist is a challenge, not necessarily dangerous. Now, obviously, if the narcissist is dangerous, because we know that that can happen, then then that's a different entity. That's when you need to go and report to the authorities. But what I'm talking about right now is, like from my perspective, you know, my ex, very, very challenging, but my activation in my body was coming from my perception that he was actually dangerous. But all he was saying was words and that psychological abuse. But that psychological abuse and the words that he was using was really aggravating a core emotional wound of mine that had come from my childhood, my perception of my relationship with my father, that I wasn't good enough, that I wasn't worthy, because he would never say, I'm proud of you or I love you. Now, that was my perception. As an adult, I know, of course, he loves me. 
But my perception as a child was because he wasn't saying those words to me, that in some way it was because of me that I wasn't good enough. And that meant in my body, that pain was like, wow, I'm not good enough. So my brain is like, right, that's dangerous. Don't want you to ever feel like that again. That is a pain. We do not want you to bear ever, ever again. So that really became almost my my version of danger. So then anybody in my adult life or teenagers um, onwards, in any way that could be perceived that they were trying to make me feel not good enough, my brain and body were like, oh, danger, 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 because it was reliving the pain of what I felt in my past. So I would have all of my protection, protector parts coming up then. So, you know, I do internal family systems um, in the work that I do where the protector parts are there. We welcome all of our protector parts. Now, my protector parts very prevalently growing up were perfectionism, high achieving, people pleasing. Three very, very, very powerful protector parts. Now, they serve me well in circumstances, but they were there with the sole purpose of trying to distract and soothe me away from feeling my emotional core wound of this little girl who didn't feel good enough, who didn't feel like she mattered because I wasn't receiving and getting those words from my father. And I interpreted that as in some way, I'm not good enough. Now I knew as an adult that that was not true, but my wiring in my nervous system was already there. So for me to change all of that, I needed to go back and heal those really core emotional wounds from my childhood. Because when I did that, then there was no wound for those protector parts to keep showing up for me. So then when my ex would behave in a certain way, I didn't know those protector parts coming up. I didn't need to please him. I didn't need to try and be perfect. I didn't need to have that high achieving because I didn't have that emotional wound that needed protecting. And my brain thinking, nope, don't want you to feel like that. It's too painful. But how did I still find that sense of peace then, knowing that I'd been in a relationship like that, knowing that the relationship even now I have with my father isn't the ideal relationship I would love to have with my father. And it's not because I don't want it to be, it's because he's not capable of doing that. How do you find a sense of peace in that? How do you find a sense of peace in something you can never have or never change. And this is when I talk about that sense of grief and that sense of loss. And this is why we always have to keep focusing on what we do have, working on those core emotional wounds so that in the present, we're not feeling that activation. So that in the present, you know you are safe. Now that doesn't mean I still don't have a sense of sadness of the relationship I would have loved to have had with my dad because my mum passed away in 2009. And I, again, that sense of loss, I feel with my mom. And when I look back at my life, there is so much loss involved. You know, I had the loss of my mom, the loss of maybe the relationship with my dad, both as a child and even now as an adult, and he's in his 80s now. I'm never going to have that. The loss of my marriage, the loss of my home when I went through my divorce, loss of friendships along the way. You know, that real sense of loss and finding a place of peace in all of that. I think that was a journey for me in finding and working on my core emotional wounds. And this is what I help my community do in my narcissistic trauma recovery program. You know, we work on the adult self. So the activation we're feeling in the present, how do we manage those symptoms? But of course, you know, being trauma informed, it's not just about managing the symptoms, we want to work on the root cause. And that's where we go back and work on those, the younger self, those wounded younger parts of us, the emotional wounds, so that we can then go and live as our future self, our best life, our best self, you know, because that's what we want. We want to live our best life because you know what? It's all available to us. But so many of us, and I did this for many, many years following my divorce, I was sat in this sense of, how can I live my life? Look what happened to me. This happened to me. It's never going to be the same. And I really sat in that place of really looking at what I didn't have. 
I didn't have this. I didn't have the childhood with my dad. I don't have my mum anymore. I don't have the relationship with my dad that I would love to have. I don't have a marriage anymore. I've lost friends along the way. I lost my home. I was in a huge amount of debt. How do I find resolution in all of that to actually find a sense of peace to move on with my life, to live as my best self? And it's a process, you know, this doesn't happen overnight, but it is a process. But I want you to know that if you're feeling that sense of loss, literally in your bones, like I did, and you're feeling that sense of grief, we've got to start to shift. And when I talk about healing, healing just doesn't happen. When we talk about narcissistic trauma, you don't just wake up one day and go, ah, I'm healed. Sadly, it doesn't work like that because it's in your body. You know, the work that I do is mind, brain and body. We need to work on that body work. It was so important. You know, a lot of sort of psychology is the neck up and we really need to work on our body because we don't think anxiety. You know, we don't think depression. We feel it. We feel that activation in your body. You know, if I said to you right now, OK, unclench your jaw and drop your shoulders. And I'd love to know how many of you went. Oh, that was me. Because <laughs> it was me. I felt like I was walking around with my shoulders up and my jaw clenched for so long. I really, really did. So it's really important for you to recognize that this isn't just about our thoughts. It's not just about changing our thoughts. It's about working in the body. It's about finding a sense of integration. How do we integrate into you, into your body? So you recognize what has happened. And you find a sense of peace. So you recognize you are now safe. It, and yes, there will always be an element of maybe some sadness around all of that and a tiny bit of activation around all of that. But there's a difference between being sort of eight, nine, 10 out of 10, highly dysregulated and a kind of one or a two out of 10. And we call this when we do EMDR, um, SUD, so subjective units of distress scale. You know, you might feel at the moment like you're a nine out of 10 activation dysregulated. That is not good for you. Okay. That is where your perception is in the present. There is danger. So we need to get that right down to a, a one or even a two at a push so that you can find a sense of peace, recognizing I am safe in the present. And yes, there's an element of sadness about all these things that have happened to me. Remember, never because of you, to you, so that you can go on and live your best life. But I just really want to say to you, it's normal to feel like this. You know, it is normal to feel that sense of loss. It's normal to feel that sense of grief. Even if you know what they are like, it's still OK to feel like that. But it's not OK for you on a daily basis to be feeling that level of activation of your perception of danger because you will be pumping out cortisol that can lead to inflammation, which can lead to a whole host of illnesses. You know, 80, 90 percent plus of disease and illness comes from stress. And that comes from in the present us feeling like there is danger. And there isn't any danger for many of us. Yes, there's challenge, but it's about knowing I am safe in the present moment. And yes, there are challenges, but I know I'm safe. And yes, I feel a sense of sadness about those things that happened to me, times that I cannot get back. But I want to make sure that I am going to live my best life now. And this is where we bring in, in positive psychology, what we call post-traumatic growth. Growth because of what you have been through. An awakening, I call it. You know, the narcissist for me woke me up and I lead a much more deeper, joyful life now because of what I went through. Because I could go back and look at why was I feeling the way I was in the present with the narcissist? What was it highlighting in me? So rather than thinking, this is me now, think about what's the story behind why I feel the way that I do right now? Where is this coming from? Because no one can make you feel anything. The reason you feel the way you do with that activation is because there's your perception somewhere that this situation is dangerous. And very often, if you know that there is no actual danger, it's coming from a negative belief on a deep level that you are saying to yourself, I'm not worthy, I'm not lovable, I'm not good enough. And that becomes your perception of danger, which then means you are going to react. And that could be things like those protector parts coming up for you. People pleasing, self-sabotaging, perfectionism, high achieving, self-harming, addictions, dissociation, emotional eating, all of the ones that I can relate to. 
They were a lot of my protector parts, but they were all there with the bestest of intention of trying to distract and soothe me away from my core emotional childhood wound of just feeling not, not good enough. But again, what child isn't good enough? It was purely my perception. So we've got to go back and change that. We call that reconsolidation of memory. And I cover all of this in my narcissistic trauma recovery program. So we really work on those different elements of self, the adult self, that element of activation, managing that, the younger self working on those core emotional wounds, and then the future self, you know, that future self who deserves to live an amazing life because you do. You absolutely do. And it's all available to you. Let me tell you, it is all there available to you. But when we are living blended with our protector parts because of a core emotional wound, that's when we just hit those blocks all of the time. So I just want to send you a big hug. I just want to send you lots of love right now. If you, like me, were feeling in your bones, literally that sense of loss, that sense of grief. But use that as a driver for you now. We can't change what happened but we can really integrate that into your system to find a sense of peace for you so that you can go on and, and use your struggle to be your strength now moving forward. Because you know what? Narcissistic abuse does not need to define you forevermore. And I see so many people staying stuck and it doesn't have to be like that, but it does take intention. It does take work. It does take daily practice, but boy, oh boy, is it worth it? Because you know what? Your best life is available to you right now. We just need to work on all of that. But if you're feeling that sense of loss and grief right now, know that it is normal. But get curious about why you're feeling like that. And then take those steps. Because remember, those teeny tiny steps even can lead to giant leaps. So wherever you are right now, just know that this does not need to define you. It does not need to be your future we just need to integrate that into your system for you to find a sense of peace, to recognize in the present you are safe now and focusing then on what we can do, what we do have right now. Because remember, we can't feel gratitude and anger at the same time. So there's a lot in your life that I know is there that we don't see when we're going through all of this. I just want you to take a step back. What one thing could you do right now to help accelerate your healing. And you know where I am, come and join my community, free community, come and join my narcissistic trauma recovery program, which is literally, you know, the number one community for people to really heal on a mind, brain and body level of narcissistic trauma, because it is available to you, absolutely. So take care and I will see you soon.